In this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can achieve this type of result using Blender and Quixel Bridge assets. You will be surprised how quick and easy you can do this kind of things. And it's kind of weird because we're gonna work like we were playing with Lego. If you don't know me, my name is Abu Cesar and I would like to invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the notification bell so every time I post a new video, you will be warned, okay? Without further ado, let's get started. So, the first step you're gonna need to take in any type of artist project is to gather some reference images. In my case, I took several different images from roads and you can see that I have overhaul stuff showing a road in a big picture, some things that show the entire road. Also, I took some images to show me how the damage on the road can happen and also I took some reference from the curves on the corner of the road to see how those different things connect with each other, okay? So these are my reference and with that I have a grasp about the storytelling and the type of effect that I'm gonna need to make this world realistic. Going in here on Quixel, you can see that I have this asphalt here, which you can see that the size is 3 by 3 meters, which is great because I know the size. And the size of a road is something about 6 and 7 meters, which will be the size that we're gonna try to get on our scene. So, all I need to do is to take this asset here and download on my computer. I will use the 4K resolution because I don't think 8K will make a huge difference for the distance of our cameras in this case, and also to make our scene more lighter. And then I can just click here in export. If you don't know how to install and use Quixel assets on your computer, you can click in the video on top of my head, which is the card that will allow you to go to the video where I teach you how to install and use Quixel assets on your computer. So I will just click here export and now the material is on blender for me here in blender i will press shift a and add a plane and i will change the size of this plane from two meters to three meters you can see that the material is here on the library i can just click here to apply it on my object but as you can see the material is kind of weird because the add-on for pixel is kind of old so it's new it's an add-on for blender 2.93 i believe so we're gonna need to go here to the shade editor, editor and fix some stuff. The things that we're gonna fix will be the roughness, which is on the specular, and the normal map, which is on the emission, we're gonna change it to the normal. You can see that things are really reflective, it's because of the clear coats. So let's just click here and press backspace on our principal shader to reset the principal shader. Anyway, now you can see that we have this plane which has three meters and now we can increase the size to make it our road. So to do that, we have two options. We could use a array modifier, something like this, and then duplicate this array modifier in with zero, zero here and one here to increase the count and do something like this. In my case, I don't wanna use those modifiers. All I'm gonna do is to press tab to enter the edit mode and I will come here to the options and click here in the correct face attributes and stuff. I will select this corner and I will move it something like uh, 4 meters in this direction and I will move it something like 10 meters in this direction. Now that we have our road, let's add some curves around our scene. To do that, I will come back to Pixel and here I download some of those street curves. These street curves are free actually, so you can use those. Uh, even though you don't have a uh, Epic Games account, so they are in the free package. So let's come here, let's export it and come here in True Blender, you can see that our curve is here. So what I'm gonna do is to select our curve, press Alt P to clear the parent and keep the transformation. Let's delete this one, this thing here and you can see that we have two pieces of curves here. Now, a thing that I like to do is to make the curves manually because uh, usually we, when we are using those assets it's cool to have some kind of slightly you know error in our project because it will make it look more real. So in my case I, I prefer to come here and start to move things around and position it by myself because I feel this the, in the end of the day this result will be more pleasing and more realistic because we, it will add more randomness in our scene. And well, 
this is the part that really makes me enjoy use Quixel assets because you can just stack planes on top of planes to get a really realistic result without too much effort. It's really simple to do. Let me show you. For example, I would like to come to my scene and to add some stripes. And then I can just come here and select the resolution. In this case, 2K is more than enough. I would like to put it in 1K actually, but anyway. Let's export it into Blender and I can just snap it on a plane. So let me show, I can just press Shift A, add a plane and now I can just come here to the materials, select my new material, the white road stripe. And by looking on the size, you can see that the dimensions are 2 by 0.25 meters. So I can just come here to my dimensions, I have 2 meters and I, I also have 0.25 centimeters and then I can come here to Ctrl A and apply the scale and now I have this stripe line here. Obviously, you can see that the material of this, this thing is completely wrong, completely. So, let's reset our principal shader Finally, I can just come here, select my snap point to add center and I can just snap it on the middle of my road and also on top of my road by putting it on the face, also the vertex if I need it. And this will be almost good enough. The only thing is we have a Z fight problem here, which will happen in Eevee and also will happen on cycles, which will give us a really weird result, as you can see. A lot of black stuff and transparency, it's just weird. To fix that, it's really simple. Just press G. Z to move on the Z axis and type something like 0 0.001 to move it one millimeter from the distance it just looks like something on top of the road. <laughs> it's perfect like that. Uh, another thing that I don't like on this texture is the color of the asphalt inside is too different from the color on my road. So to fix that, a uh, thing that I like to do is to change the opacity channel. So if we press Ctrl Shift click in the opacity channel, you can see that the black part, which will be the transparent part, is only outside. But we could do something really simple. I can just press Shift A, come here to Converter, Color Ramp, and I can take the color information from my color, convert it in a black and white stuff on my color ramp, and then I can just bring the details inside to make a completely new alpha channel and I can use this alpha channel to replace my original alpha channel like this creating a completely new texture by doing that so I can increase or decrease the contrast here to make this effect, this effect pop up and if you would like to be more precise you could just select your alpha channel which is this one here and select your color ramp press ctrl 0 to add a mix shape, a mix RGB actually, and then we can just change the type from mix to multiply, which will mix those together. Now you have those two options together, which will allow us to go a little bit, a little bit crazier in the black part. I think something like this is good enough for me. And then you can just duplicate it around your scene. For example, I can put it uh, each five meters, and then. I have my stripes on my road, on my road. Also, I can just put it on the corner. I will just come here to the modifiers, add modifier, and I will add an array modifier on this object and then duplicate it to the other side of my road. You can see now how this is good because look, look how realistic it is. It is. And look how flexible it also is because those are just planes. You can just drag and drop those planes, you can just drag and move it around. It's really, really, really simple to work with. If we need, we can add a lot of detail by using those assets with displacement. So take a look. And in this case, I would like to use the displacement channel. So to use displacement blender, it's really simple, but we'll need to click in a lot of stuff. This is something that I really don't like, but anyway, things are like they are. First, uh, we need to add the displacement because in our case, the Quixel add-on is not importing the displacement by default. So I can just click here on this folder, which will open for us the original folder where those textures are downloaded on our, on our computer. And then I can come here and select my displacement EXR. I prefer to use the EXR, it's a bit heavier, 
but at least brings me more detail. So let me just select it and drag and drop on my scene and then I can cancel it. Now I can just press and hold out, click and hold with your right, no, right mouse button and then connect it. It's really simple like that. And finally I can just connect it to my displacement and then let's convert it to a displacement by going here to vector displacement. Done. Uh, let's remove the normal and add the height. You can see that we are seeing nothing for now. But So let's subdivide it a little bit, something like this is more than enough. And then let's change our cycles options from supported to experimental. The experimental will allow us to have a subdivision surface modifier with the adaptive subdivision stuff turned on. And now we can see our displacement working as soon as we go here to settings and change the displacement to displacement only we can see the displacement happening. It's really horrible now. <laughs> so first let's snap it on the ground move it something like 0 0.002 millimeters from the, from the ground and then let's reduce the scale for something like 0 0.05 let's move it up a little bit until it's coming off the ground and look how this is looking realistic in our scene and also if you would like to add some details like dirt or dried leaves on top of the, the road it's really simple you just need to repeat the same process take a look here I have these dragon creep leaves which I will add to my scene I will just apply the material now fix the problems with the material and by having this type of transparent thing you can just place it on top of a road move it slightly up something like one millimeter and then you can just start to increase the size of this thing by using the correct face attribute stuff for example or you can let me undo that or you can alt d and make this effect pop up like this so you can see that we have a problem here this problem is the, that we have we are having some couple on our face so to avoid that, just press G to move, Z to move in the Z axis, 0 0.001 millimeter. And then you can start to stack things on top and down and make this type of effects here by creating a dirt on top of the road. I love to work like that because it's so flexible, it's so easy to work with. I feel like I have freedom to do whatever I want. You can also do the same for something like the stylable dried leaves here, which I will export to my scene as well and do the same for the corners of my road. I will also make sure that the size is correct, coming here to pixel bridge and see that the size of this object is 2 meter by 50 centimeters, so I will change that here on Blender, 2 meters by 0.5 meters. I will press Ctrl to apply this scale. I will also fix this thing here moving something like 0.001 millimeter up and now I can just take this part here and I can stack it up on my things here inside of Blender just by doing that so I will snap it on this corner here and then move something like 0.001 to, pull, to move one millimeter up and then I can just use an array modifier S to scale, X to scale in the X axis, minus one to invert and then I can just position it here on the corners of my road. This is the type of result you can get by stacking up those pixel assets to get really precise results. Look how interesting it's looking so far. If you like this video, subscribe, click the notification bell so every time I post a new video, you will know it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in our next video. Bye, take care.